Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So, have you ever had a GM vehicle where the ECU swap doesn't go quite as planned? Maybe you plugged in a use module thinking it'll be a quick fix only to find out you get a locked message on your dash or even worse, a bricked ECU. So this was one of my client's concerns and when I reached out to him, um, I noticed he wasn't aware of GM's Global A architecture, especially when dealing with these used modules. So today I want to show you what I did to advise him on the right approach to safely handle these situations in the future and also show you guys what I did to get that used module programmed and configured safely. All right. So this is going to be called will programming a used ECU on a 2015 Buick LaCrosse brick your vehicle. If you are new to the channel, welcome. My name is Curtis Harden. I'm an independent all tail diagnostic consultant. Whether you're just starting out and need the right tool strategy or you already invested in a tool but need extra skill sets to transform your business, that's exactly what I specialize in. Head on over to alltelltech.zo.za and book the diagnostic tool consultation. Now this is what you're going to learn. You're going to see which tools we use to conduct this procedure and you're going to learn how to evaluate the risk of installing a used ECU on GM vehicles. Third, you're going to learn how to effectively time and execute module swap during programming. And then how to address and resolve the error code E4491 during ECU programming failure. And lastly, how to program a used ECU module on a 2015 Buick LaCrosse. All right. The tools that we use are the following, the J2534, the Windows laptop, and your used engine control unit okay now to give you back uh, ground of this case study the auto dealership recently acquired a vehicle from an auction that had been diagnosed with a faulty engine control unit the vehicle's non-functional ECU posed a significant challenge for the dealership as they needed to restore the car to its operational status in order to sell it okay so after determining that the engine control unit was beyond repair the dealership logically thought of a cost-effective solution which is purchasing a used ECU all right but they were not un they were unaware of the risk involved when uh, a used module is installed in such a critical system and that's when they reached out to me for advice on how to approach this okay so this is the uh, educational process that I had to share with the client okay so first I had to show them about GM's Global A architecture. So in a nutshell, GM's Global A architecture is an advanced electrical platform introduced around 2010. It governs how various vehicle systems communicate and operate, enhancing security, data flow, and diagnostics. To, to, to be honest with you guys, it's just a bunch of BS. All right, They're, they are just making our lives more miserable and it doesn't make sense to implement this and then when you try to do it the right way their uh, new modules have like a back order for six months okay so it's just a bunch of BS <laughs> all right so the client asked me so what happens if I install a used module on a vehicle that has this global A architecture and two things are gonna happen first is the rejection of the module so since the ECU is coded to the original vehicle's VIN, the Global A system will detect a mismatch. This will prevent the module from functioning in the new vehicle. The car may not start and essential functions controlled by the ECU will remain inoperative. So to give you guys some uh, perspective, when a vehicle comes out, uh, the manufacturer, the, the modules are programmed that are programmed will have a permanent ID stored in you know those modules. Now this is due to the what they call the unique environment identifier that will you know be stored in the ECU, which is tied to the original vehicle's VIN and security settings. Okay, and the other thing that could potentially happen is bricking the module. So if the security protocols detect unauthorized tampering or mismatch modules, the system will can brick the ECU, rendering it permanently unusable. This extends to other connected control modules in severe cases. So to give you guys some context, um, I had clients not on my watch that took the liberty to uh, just put on a used ECU and try to program it. Not only did that uh, module get programmed, but other modules that I guess were connected to it got messed up. All right, so that's, that's what happened 
um, worst case scenario. Common symptoms that you guys will see um, when you install this on a Global A is, you know, the VIN in the TechBind Connect doesn't match the vehicle, you know, for obvious reasons. Um, you'll get a DTC B3902, which is incorrect email ID. And this can show up in the instrument cluster, the SDM, the ECM, the HVAC, or the BCM, among others. And you cannot uh, delete this uh, error code, okay? Um, the other one is the odometer or trip odometer in the uh, IPC may just show dashes, okay? And then the vehicle might not only recognize the power mode if key fobs from the donor vehicle are included in the swap, okay? And lastly, the DTC B389A environmental identification may show up in the BCM or ECM, and you'll see a service theft uh, system message and um, the, security, the security light will be on, okay? So those are common symptoms that you might encounter when you install a use module on a global A architecture system, okay? So the client asked me, so what's the proper way to replace a used GM module safely? And I said, look, I'm gonna have to teach you how to you know, do virginization and cloning because <clears throat> the virginization process removes the associated information from the previous vehicle and we can only do this with specialized tools and software to reset the ECU to factory settings, okay? So obviously the client didn't have, you know, this available. So he said, Kurt, let's just, you know, take the risk. I know what's gonna, you know, the risk I'm taking. I wanna use the module that we have. So that's what we're gonna do. So first is programming the engine control unit using the Tech Connect, TechLine Connect software. First, I'm gonna install the original ECU in the vehicle, it's still communicating. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I want TechLine to take that uh, VIN number and store it in our account. If you put the donor module on at this point um, prematurely, okay, that donor module is gonna be on your account and it's not going to uh, program to the original vehicle's VIN number, okay? So that's the first thing we're gonna do, all right? All right, and you can see here, that's the original VIN number. I'm gonna select replace and reprogram. All right, and then after that, I'm gonna click next at the bottom. All right, so once we do that, you can see here on the left-hand side, I'm looking for K20, which is the engine control unit. We're gonna select programming, and then we're gonna click next. Okay, and then once we click proceed here, it's gonna put that VIN number in our AC Delco account. So anytime in the future, we need to do any programming we just select that v that VIN number and we can program this VIN uh, again at no extra charge okay so at this point we got the VIN so we're going to replace the original module with the donor ECU for for programming all right so the client went ahead and did that and now the donor ECU is on the vehicle and we're going to proceed with the programming okay so we're going to click start programming. All right, you're tipping your program with the same calibration. That's fine. We're going to click OK. Then we're going to let this do its thing. All right. And what you're going to notice here, everything seems smoothly, but you typically get errors at the end of the program. Okay, which you're going to find here. Okay, it's like at 99%. And then after that, you're going to see that it's, you know, retrying to rewrite the ECU. All right, and then from there, it's trying, and then we're gonna get this prompt here. All right, I'm gonna select override, so it'll override this donor VIN with the original. Okay, and then when I did that, we got a, a, an error code here. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do. Handling communication error during programming and retrying the process. So I just made sure that the client, you know, had um, his auto off, uh, you know, everything was um, not interfering, all right, BCI is communicating. I'm just gonna try it again, okay? So I'm gonna go replace and reprogram, okay? And then donor module's still in the vehicle, all right? I'm gonna go back to the engine control unit, all right? Do you want to proceed? Yes. Remember, we still have the original VIN still stored in this, this uh, session. And then we're going to 
follow the prompts. All right, do you want to override it? We're going to click override that donor vent. All right, override. All right, we're doing the same calibration file. All right, and this time you're going to see that we're getting this menu. Okay, so something happened. And this was probably like a 15 minute uh, duration. And my client was getting worried and I said, just, just trust the process, man. Just trust the process. And that's what we did. And then we finally got this uh, action complete. All right, so then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, click later. I'm gonna clear the DTCs. Okay, and then I'm gonna go on to the next process, which is relearning the key using the immobilizer learn function. Okay, so I read the repair information. They said if the car doesn't start, this is what we need to do. The client confirmed the car didn't start. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and uh, proceed with the same VIN and we're gonna uh, look for the immobilizer learn. All right, so if I scroll down, it's right here, the Z1 code immobilizer learn. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and click next. All right, and then when programming PEPS uh, review, so PEPS is just passive entry, passive start. It's just an advanced keyless system. Um, our tool, our, our vehicle didn't have this uh, system so this isn't applicable to us but you need to look because that pocket location varies and you have to put the key a certain way and when prompted to all right so we're gonna go ahead and enter this immobilizer learn process and as you can see here we have a menu so we're gonna click engine control module emo learn that's exactly what we did that's what we replace replacement of engine control module all right so Turn the vehicle to the off power mode. Okay. Don't start the engine. And then we're going to turn it back to on. All right. And then there's going to be a 12 minute process. All right. I fast forwarded. All right. So turn the vehicle to the off power mode and remove the key. Okay. So open and close the driver door, avoiding turning on any operating accessories at this time so once that's done we're going to go ahead and click next all right we're going to do the countdown turn the vehicle to the run power on mode so put it back on run all right and then turn the vehicle to the off power mode then remove the key open and close the driver door all right we're going to go ahead and do that and then we're going to click next do the countdown turn the vehicle to the run power mode one more time all right, and then please check the engine start with the with each transponder key, okay, which it did. All right, and then once we uh, finish that procedure, we're gonna go ahead and click exit, and then we are done with that procedure, okay. So, if this is a global A vehicle, how did the programming still work, okay? So this is my hypothesis. All right. So first is the security system differences, all right? So first, the programming worked because the environmental and security data in the BCM and other modules were correctly synced during the process. So starting with the original ECU allowed the system to verify the VIN and sync the, uh, and sync the BCM with the correct environmental data, ensuring no conflicts when swapping the used ECU, okay? And then the key difference here might have been related to the subtle, subtle differences or variances in the module type or, or firmware version. Okay, so small differences in you know firmware or hardware between modules can affect reprogramming. In our case, the use ECU was likely compatible with the allowing allowing the process to complete. Okay, so we just kind of got lucky. Okay. And then in some cases, slight differences in module conditions such as pre-existing security locks can prevent successful reprogramming, which explains why this procedure may not always work in similar vehicles. So, so some used modules have security locks that block reprogramming. In, in, in our case, the ECU was su successfully overwritten, but in other cases, these locks um, prevent you know any type of success. Okay, so yeah, guys, that's... Uh, the, the nature of the, the beast, all right? 
So in summary, always check the repair information to ensure that you're using the correct programming strategy for the vehicle. Okay, I've seen instances where when you put on a used module, you know how normally you'll click replace and reprogram. Sometimes the manufacturer just tells you to click reprogram. So you got to look at those little details. All right. Avoid using used modules on GM Global A vehicles with OEM flash software. Modules like PCM, BCM radios may cause system failures. Okay. Um, next, after successfully reprogramming the donor module, always run the immobilizer learn procedure to re-register the keys to the new engine control unit ensuring the vehicle will start correctly okay um and then if you're dealing with gm ecu replacements and want to avoid costly mistakes cloning or virginizing is the solution okay so you guys need to learn this skill all right if you have the right tool strategy you'll be able to do this and training okay so if you want to learn what tools you need to do bench programming head on over to allteletech.co.za and i'll give you a rundown based on you know specific manufacturers okay so with that i hope you enjoyed and i'll see you guys in the next one take care